UFC Fight Night, Allen versus Craig. We got a last minute video for you guys because I was sick as a dog all week. Couldn't really talk and now I'm finally getting my voice back and it's like an octave lower than it usually is. So trying to enjoy it. Uh, yeah, a little tired. Was at the Bellator fight last night. Uh, last ever Bellator card. So got to witness history. It was pretty cool. Most notably Yaroslav Amasov losing his belt and losing all my parlays. Uh, but shout out to Jason Jackson for really bringing it to uh, Yaroslav. And then we also had Patchy Mix winning the bantamweight belt over Sergio Pettis. So pretty fun card to go see live overall. Uh, my first card ever seeing live. My first MMA event ever. Um, and now we get some UFC action. So anytime we can get two big MMA cards in one weekend, I'm happy. Uh, let's get right into it. First off, we have a heavyweight matchup between Mick Parkin and Kyle Machado. Parkin is the minus 385 favorite, and he's 7-0 overall, 2-0, or 1-0 in the UFC. He's got a Dana White Contender Series win. Machado's coming in at around a plus 290 underdog. He is 8-1-1 overall. Parkin, uh, he trains with Tom Aspinall, most notably, as well as uh, Philip DeFries. Uh... That's really all I needed to hear when he was making his Dana White Contender Series debut to take him in that fight. He's since beat Jamal Pokes as well, so he's got that first UFC win under his belt. I'm going to take him to win this one by decision. He's a bit bigger than Kyle Machado, and he's got that benefit of training consistently with two massive dudes in Tom Aspinall and Philip DeFries, two super talented guys at the top of their game, Aspinall. Best heavyweight in the world right now um yeah i'll say that confidently he's the best guy right now uh so i think parkins when parkin wins this one by decision i think his style lends itself to winning more decisions uh in the ufc he's got a bunch of ko's but <clears throat> i see him sort of just controlling machado for the majority of this fight and uh winning it on the cards Next up is a middleweight fight between Christian Leroy Duncan and Dennis Tululin. CLD is 8-1 overall. He's the minus 550 favorite. Tululin is 10-8 overall and is the plus 385 underdog. Tululin is just kind of one of these guys for me that we're, we're going to be fading from here on out as long as his UFC career lasts. Uh, hadn't gotten KO'd too much before his last fight versus Gregory Rodriguez. He showed a great chin up until then, but Rodriguez really cracked him and finished him. Uh, CLD, I think, is just a much faster guy here and just a much more dynamic striker. Uh, and he's a guy who needs to get some hype back after a bit of a disappointing start to his UFC career. Had an unceremonious debut versus Todorovic that, unfortunately, uh, Todorovic blew his knee out and CLD didn't really get to show off. And then he got a really tough matchup versus Armin Petrosian, a guy who's just a much more polished kickboxer at this point than CLD, and he was able to just kind of win that one on the, the cards. So I think CLD is going to be looking to make a statement here. I think he wins this one by KO versus Dennis DeLuan. After that, we have a bantamweight fight between Chad and Eliger and Jose Johnson. Chad is 12-6 and six, uh, overall, plus 170. He's the plus 170 underdog. Jose Johnson is the minus 200 favorite and is 15 and 8 overall. Jose Johnson is super explosive. Um, he's pretty tall for the man and weight division. And he's got some crazy like flying knee finishes under his belt. I liked him a lot as an underdog versus Demond Blackshear, but his lack of grappling and uh, really got him in trouble. And he ended up getting some mis uh, getting twister twistered by Demond Blackshear. Um, he's a guy who's, yeah, explosive, but just a bit one-dimensional. Chad is, he's been in the game for a while. He's, he's up there in age, but I think he's going to be the much more complete fighter, at least right now. Uh, so I think he wins this one by decision. I think he'll find a way to grapple his way to a win here. After that, we have a featherweight fight between Jonathan Pierce and Joe Anderson Brito. Pierce is... 14-4 uh, overall, 5-0 in his last five in the UFC. And he's a slight minus 130 favorite. Brito is 15-3-1 uh, overall. 
Three one in the UFC, and he's coming in at a plus one ten underdog. As of late, though, Brito's been looking like an absolute killer. I know his most recent matchup was against a bit of a uh, lower level guy. I guess you could say a guy who didn't really have much uh, UFC experience up until that point. Nonetheless, Brito put him out real quick. Uh, yeah, the question here is really can can Pierce keep Joe Anderson Brito out of his face? and keep some of that forward momentum of Brito off of him. Pierce is a guy who mixes in the grappling and striking very well. Um, and he's super aggressive in his own right. I think someone's getting finished here. Um, and I'm gonna put my money on Brito. He's got that win over Diego Lopez that's aged really well. Uh, that fight was in the Dana White Contender Series. So I think that's a testament to where Brito's grappling is at, where he could hopefully keep it on the feet uh, enough for him to find Pierce's chin. So, yeah, Brito by KO is going to be the pick here. Uh, you're getting underdog money on him as well. Next up is a welterweight fight between Uros Medic and Miktebek Orobai. Uh, Medic is 9-1 overall, 3-1 in, his, in the UFC. And he's going to be the slight underdog here versus... A guy that no one's ever heard of, Miktebek Orobai, minus 125 favorite. He's 11, 1-1 one one overall. Guys, I, I don't get this. I really don't get this. Miktebek Orobai, I think people are just getting a bit disillusioned by the, oh, you know, Kyrgyzstan, Kyrgyzstani, I believe he's from. Um, who's the other famous Kyrgyzstani fighter? Valentina, of course. Uh, or no, I think she's Azerbaijani, so you no, know, scratch that. But I think people are looking at this guy. They're looking, you know, they're seeing a new Shavkat Rachmanov in him. But I see absolutely no reason for this guy to be favored. He's You've never heard of him. You've never heard of anyone he's fought. He's only 25. Medic, uh, while he doesn't have quite as many fights overall, he's got the four UFC fights under his belt. We know what he's capable of. Uh, I think you bet your life on Medic here at plus money. I think he finds a KO here versus Miktebek Orobai. After that, we have a strawweight fight between Luana Pinero and Amanda Amanda Hibas. Pinero is 11-1 overall, uh, and it is the plus 200 underdog. Hibas is 11-4 overall and is the minus uh, 245 favorite. I'll admit I haven't watched much of uh, tape on Luana Pinero, but Amanda Hibas, she's, uh, we've seen a lot of her in the cage. She's got a lot of UFC experience, uh, nine fights in the promotion versus, uh, Luana's three fights in the promotion. I'm going to trust the public here. Uh, this is kind of a tough one to pick, but I'm going to take Hibas by decision here. After that, we have a bantamweight fight between Peyton Talbot and Nick Aguirre, or Aguirre. I'm not sure how his last name is pronounced. Talbot is 6-0 overall and is the minus 800 favorite. Aguirre is 7-1 overall, 0-1 in the UFC. And uh, I'm, I'm all in on Talbot long term. Watched his Dana White Contender Series fight where he took on Tracy Cortez's brother, who was a, a bit older, um, definitely more experienced. And he pretty much dominated that fight, and he looked really polished uh, doing it. He's tall. He's got a long reach for the division. Um, and he just looks like a much more experienced guy than, than he is. Uh, I think the UFC is putting him in a ma uh, main card spot here. They're setting him up for the future. I think they see something in this guy. Uh, he's I don't know. He's, he's just kind of cool. He's got a super interesting tat. He's got the long hair uh, and the kind of the enigmatic personality. So I think the UFC sees something in him and is kind of cherry picking this matchup with Nick Aguirre, uh, sort of a, a showcase fight for Talbot. So I think Talbot gets a finish in this one. I, I'm taking him by KO. The next fight we have is just a phenomenal matchup. It is Chase Hooper taking on Jordan Levitt, potentially the goofiest fight of the year. Hooper is 3-2 and two in his last five and is going to be the minus 200 favorite. Levitt is 3-2 as well in his last five and is the plus 170 underdog. 
I can tell I'm sounding more and more congested, so I gotta get through this video. Um, yeah, long story short, I like Levitt as a dog here. Uh, Chase is still young. He's, he's, you know, he was kind of the uh, Raul Rosas before Raul Rosas. Came into the UFC when he was like 18, 19 years old. And had his ups and downs since, but he's a guy who's constantly improving. He's a guy whose body is... I, just changed a lot throughout his time in the UFC. He's gone up a weight class since joining. I think Huber is one of these guys that's kind of a tweener. He's a bit small for lightweight, but I don't know if he can really make 145 uh, or at least healthily make that cut consistently. And I think Levitt's just gonna be the stronger dude here. Um, Huber might be the more technical grappler of the two. It's tough to say, but that doesn't really count for much if Levitt's able to just sort of outmuscle him. I think Levitt wins this one by a decision um, in a pretty grapply, grappling heavy affair, um, but it should be fun to watch regardless. So Levitt by decision is gonna be the pick there. Our co-main event is uh, a welterweight fight between Michael Morales and Jake Matthews. Morales, 15 and 0 undefeated. He is the minus 310 favorite. Jake Matthews is the plus 250 underdog, and he's 3-2 in his last five fights. Morales is one of these super highly touted welterweight guys that uh, are sort of the, the next crop of welterweight talent. He's young. He's still got that zero, so there's that, you know, allure around him. Um, just still being undefeated. But despite that, I, I think people have been a bit disappointed, truly. I mean, he's done what he's had to do to win his, his fights in the UFC, but it hasn't really showed out as much as I think people want him to do. Uh, I think a lot of the hype on him is just really around his athleticism. You, you can tell he's just powerful and uh, just a super freaky athlete. He's taking on Jake Matthews, who's got a lot of UFC experience. Um, we, you know, it's tough to say, you never really know what kind of Jake Matthews you're getting in the cage, uh, you know, fight to fight. He's got fights where he looks like a world beater, like he did versus Andre Fialio. And then, you know, he takes on Matthew Semmelsberger and that the power of Semmelsberger, the power difference is just very significant in that fight. And it seemed to really deter Jake Matthews. Um, you're getting great value out of Jake Matthews here. Uh, despite him being the more experienced guy. And if this is a straight stand-up fight, uh, you know, I think really anything can happen. Gosh dang it. I think we got our dog of the week, boys. Uh, I'm taking Jake Matthews to win this one by decision. Deci decision. Jeez, dude. Cannot talk. Got to get through this video. But dog of the week. We're not doing the dog sound effects this time because... Uh, we have yet to win doing that stuff. So, uh, but that's gonna be the pick there. I think Morales, uh, a loss, you know, wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for him. He, he's super young, got a lot of time left in his career. And uh, I think this is just the time he gets fraud checked. And then we have our main event, a middleweight fight between Brendan Allen and Paul Craig. Brendan Allen is the minus 425 favorite uh, which is pretty crazy to me. Um, he is 5-0 in his last five fights and is really coming on and uh, coming into this with a lot of momentum. Craig is the plus 325 underdog, 17-6-1 um, overall, but most importantly, he's 1-0 as a middleweight. Uh, Paul Craig made, that, made the drop to 185 in his last fight versus Andre Muniz, and... It seems to have been a revelation for him. He he's, looks really big at 185, whereas at 205, uh, you know, he's tall. He's 6'4", so he's usually the same height or taller than the guys at 205. Uh, but he's just, you know, skinnier. It looked like he was a bit just smaller and less powerful than those guys. But 185, you know, this might have been his home, should have been his home for his whole career. Um, he's 35 years old, but... I think he has gotten a, a new lease on his career by making the drop to 185. He's big, he's strong for the division, division and 
I mean, you know that his grappling is as good as anyone, and especially his submissions. He's a better submission threat off his back than probably anyone in the UFC, just about. It's definitely anyone in uh, the middleweight division. But he's taking on Brendan Allen, who is, like I said, coming into this with a lot of momentum. He's super experienced for a guy of his age. He's 27 or 28 years old, but he's got a lot of fights under his belt. Joined the UFC in 2019 um, when he was only like 23, 24. And he's just kind of been constantly improving ever since joining. Uh, we've seen him make strides in the striking department, whereas we already always knew he had that uh, strong grappling base. I think he's kind of the anti-Paul Craig matchup uh, in this one because I think he's got strong enough grappling to basically not get submitted. Um, he's only been submitted once in his career, and he does have those 27 fights. So has he ever faced a guy like Paul Craig? No, not really. Uh, I mean, you know, he did out grapple Andre Muniz, as did Paul Craig, uh, which is sort of that BJJ litmus test. But uh, yeah, I think Brendan Allen is just, this is just a pretty favorable favorable matchup for him. I think he's gonna be a lot quicker on the feet, which is gonna be the biggest difference. I think he wins this one by KO um, pretty early. I'll, I'll say he wins this one in the second round by KO. But um, absolutely, if, if you know, if he tests the waters on the ground with Paul Craig, absolutely anything can happen. So uh, we'll see if he does choose to go that route. I doubt it. I think he's not going to play games with Paul Craig and uh, keep this one standing and win it by KO. But with that, that is the breakdown. Uh, like and subscribe. Comment below. Uh, you know, if you guys got any crazy picks or whatnot, if you guys got a dog of the week that you're looking at, this is the phone home MMA breakdown. We'll catch you on the next one.